Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I got the Greek freak, my Milwaukee Bucks, playing against uh, some Greek team in Greece in the background. But let's just get right into Power Book 2. I mean, Power Book 4, Ghost. And I'm just going to go... I guess you can say in spoiler order. So it's going to seem weird. I'm going to probably keep this under five minutes. Y'all know I can be real long-winded, but taking a little break for uh, for Easter vacation. I don't have to work at my school on Monday. Didn't have to work Friday. So, you know, just a little break just to get away, see something a little different. Um... The very last line of Power Book 4, Tommy is talking to Gennard, excuse me, pardon self, Tommy is talking to Diamond, and Diamond isn't really complaining, but he's saying this territory is a lot smaller than what I'm used to. But Tommy said, yeah, but it's still yours. Because obviously Diamond spared his brother instead of killing him. He said, we'll split Chicago. Everything above Marquette is mine. And uh, Marquette is like one of the main streets in Chicago that separates downtown from the south side, west side, and all that. Diamond then says something to Tommy, and you got to keep this in mind. It's escaping me what Diamond said to Tommy, but the key is Tommy said something, nah, I got something bigger in mind. I got a bigger play in mind. I want the whole effing map. Now, this is how come I can tell you, as I said in my title, Tommy is going back to Chicago. I mean, excuse me, is going to Cali for season two. Because Diamond is his boy. They have an allegiance. You know, they went to war together. Diamond always felt like he could trust Tommy. If Diamond is only running a certain small section of Chicago now, why would Tommy say, I want the whole map? Basically, why would he cut off Diamond and say, I want the whole city of Chicago? He's not talking about Chicago. The original plan for Power Book 4, Season 1, he was supposed to be in L.A. And I know y'all might be thinking, duh, we know that Jay Spruill. He, he, he turned around, he turned the car around on the first episode, we know. I'm not talking about the actual plot of the story. I'm talking about the real life events. In real life, Power had started filming in Los Angeles. And as you know, in 2020... You know, I believe I was one of the first people in my state to catch it, but COVID just, COVID was really bad in Italy. It was really bad in New York City, in New Jersey, and it was really bad in California to the point that a lot of major movies and TV shows just outright just got canceled because they couldn't keep anybody healthy on the set. So... It was two factors going on. COVID was less rampant in Chicago than it was California. And also, Chicago offered a pretty generous price to film compared to the price to film in Los Angeles. If any of you guys know, after Hurricane Katrina, New Orleans and the state of Louisiana gave a lot of incentives 
to shoot there. They were much cheaper than California. And I'll tell you two movies. The movie and the sequel. 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street. With Channing Tatum and uh, Jonah Hill. Both of those movies were shot in New Orleans. Nothing about 21 and 22 Jump Street gives you the vibe of New Orleans. But they were given a discount on filming there. And Chicago did the same thing for Force. So, y'all might be disappointed, but I think that Force and Tommy can take a much interesting turn if they end up in California like they were originally supposed to be. Uh, just me, somehow, Chicago's the third largest city in the United States. This season made Chicago feel small. You know what I mean? I didn't think that was possible to make Chicago feel small, but they really did. Um, they made it feel like old crooked eyed Freddie Gibbs. They made it feel like Gary to me. And I just think if you're not from there, you don't know how to make Chicago feel big. But LA is always big, so they can do that. Um, rest in peace to Liliana. Uh, I didn't cry, but I got I got a little misty because uh, Tommy never told her that he loved her, and I'm glad that they never crossed that boundary and, and had sex. But you could really tell he loved her, man. She was a, a very loyal person, um, very talented at the street life, even her giving the uh, the doctor, the black female doctor, a chance to get out. It's because she knew she wasn't built for that life. So she had a heart, you know. And even if Tommy would have been mad at her, he wouldn't have stayed mad at her because he understood where she was coming from. You know, he probably, she was probably going to tell him, we got to find somebody that's more built like me. And you can't have somebody that's not into the streets at all because eventually they will turn on you. Um, oh, and I guess the other thing that wasn't much of a spoiler that was kind of predictable is Vic finally realized that his daddy, Walter, was playing him, but he still didn't do anything about it. I really think for the show to be more satisfying, bam, you gotta jab your dad, man, you gotta jab him, you know, if Gloria really meant that much to you, like, cause think about it, if you are the kingpin's son, and you kill the kingpin, isn't it kind of a rule, like, honor amongst thieves, they don't go and kill the son for doing that? They're going to say, okay, what do we do next, boss? And I think that he could have put himself in a situation where he was the leader of the crew, but he chose not to. And I think that was a mistake. All right, hope y'all enjoyed my review. Have a good weekend.